Yeah, so basically this week we were going to talk about the, the Soviet experience. Uh, last week we left off with the death of Lenin and where they were at at that point. Um, you know, with they had just defeated the external forces of counter-revolution in the U.S. The U.S., France, England had all invaded, um, and they had defeated those forces, and they finally established the Soviet Union. So at the time of Lenin's death, Lenin's death was kind of a gradual thing because he, he first lost, he had, first had a stroke and lost his powers of speech. Mm -hmm. um, so he was in a wheelchair and he had very he barely spoke, he had a great deal of difficulty speaking. But finally in 1924 he died. Mm -hmm. And at the time of Lenin's death there were two factions within the Bolshevik party. There was um, one faction which was led by Bukharin and Stalin and another which was, uh, which was centered around Trotsky and, and some, some of his allies such as Karl Roddick and uh, Victor Serg and others. And the basic uh, disagreement was about the new economic policy, which was after the, um, you know, after the forces of uh, external revolution had been defeated, the, the new economic policy was that uh, you know, they were going to keep what they called the commanding heights of the economy under public control but that uh, there would be private private shops, private industry to some extent, and the banks and some of the major like industries like steel would still remain public, but for the most part it was a, it was a step back. And at the time of Lenin's death, um, there, was, there was a heavy debate, and the slogan of the uh, Bukharin-Stalin faction was um, they told the peasants to enrich themselves. And that was the slogan, enrich yourselves. And they said, they, they wanted to to build up socialism on the basis of you know keeping the bank banks publicly owned, keeping the uh, a few industries here and there publicly owned, but for the most part developing a strong capitalist economy to eventually socialize. That was that was their thesis. Whereas the 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 section around Trotsky was was opposed to continuing the new economic policy and was looking for gradual industrialization. And um, in addition to that, they wanted to gradually collectivize agriculture and, and give offer tax incentives and other things to gradually um, to gradually build up a socialist economy. Uh, the Trotskyist proposal was called a five-year plan. They called for which would uh, uh, over uh, it was five years, you know, and uh, it was a, a five-year plan to gradually become a more socialist economy. And that was one of the, the dis that was, those were the domestic disagreements, but one of the major disagreements with, um, within the party was also how it would relate to the rest of the world. Um, at this time, there were revolutionary movements in China, there were revolutionary movements in Britain. In 19... Germany? Uh, well, the, the German Revolution was still existing, but it had, um, you know, it was not as strong as it had been in, you know, 1918, 1919. Um, and so, um, the, the policy of the, the right wing of the party, of Bukharin and Stalin, was essentially that uh, they wanted uh, peaceful coexistence with the capitalists of the world, with the capitalist countries of the world, and that um, they should not push for further revolutions. So, for example, the Communist International called for the Chinese Communist Party to dissolve itself and, and join the Chinese Nationalist Party. Uh, and mm -hmm. dissolve its ranks. Uh, the the um, uh, during the British general strike of 1926, where you know all of Britain was shut down by workers out on strike, it was the um, the uh, the Communist International called for workers to uh, to end the strike and align with the Labour Party and push for a more conservative government. And the idea of the uh, the Stalin faction, which had the majority in the um, in the Communist International, was that that through doing this, the goal of the communist parties around the world should not be to have a revolution in their own country, but should be you know, to get the countries of, of the world off the backs of the Soviet Union. So the Soviet Union could build what they called socialism in one country. Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't be as harmed uh, by, by foreign countries and that, and that then the Soviet Union could build up a, a socialist economy in one country. Whereas the, the Trotskyists were saying their, their theory was called the permanent revolution where they felt that, that the Soviet Union by itself could not stand, and that in order for socialism to be created, that there needed to be revolutions in other countries throughout the world, and that world revolution should be the basis for revolutionary theory, or revolutionary activity by the Communist International. Sounds like Trotsky was right. 
Well, I would say so. History seems to have right. right. So when Trotsky, who he, uh, the left opposition, as they were called, um, they were they were defeated, and um, they were defeated in uh, 1926. By 1928, they were made an illegal organization, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. um, Trotsky was deported from the USSR and sent to Turkey. Um, those who remained, um, you know, followers of the left opposition were were jailed. And what, what you began to see in the USSR is just as when Napoleon um, came to power in, in after the French Revolution, um, that was a step um, that was a step back for the French Revolution. And it was in the month of, of Thermidor when the French Revolution took a step back. But the, the basic gain of the, the French Revolution, the economic gains it had, remained the same. After the French Revolution, the, mo the monarchy had been defeated, feudalism had been defeated, and a capitalist economy was set up. So in the USSR, they kept the public ownership of the means of production. They they kept uh, you know uh, you know workers you know Soviets existing and all that, but they took a step back in terms of uh, wages. Um, in terms uh, you know there was a bureaucracy that formed of, of leadership at the top that that got that was privileged, but they weren't capitalists because they didn't own any fa banks or factories or anything like that. Their privileges consisted of they had a better job, they might have had a you know a better apartment, they got better wages, but ultimately they were they were still um, they were still you know getting their pay from the same uh, from the same pool that everyone got their pay out of it. They were not exploiting people for profits. They were not profit makers. They were just bureaucrats. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time the left opposition was defeated, there were strikes among the workers in support of the left opposition, but they didn't spread. And the reason Trotsky gave for, for the defeat and for the, the victory of the bureaucracy was largely because the wars had been going on, millions had lost their lives, there was famine, and people were not, the Russian workers were tired, and they were exhausted, and they were not ready to have another fight, and another bloody, uh, another bloody episode. They were ready to just say, look, we've gotten this far, we've driven out the invaders, we've won the revolution, now let's just stop here. And that was that was basically the, the thesis of, you know, socialism in one country, we need to stop pushing for these world revolutions, we just, and, and we'll just, we'll build socialism, we'll set up here, and, and we'll, we'll offer you peace. Whereas Trotsky wanted to continue the revolutionary spirit of upheaval and all of that, and so he did not win out. So, when... It, may, may I oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Because I want to know more about the character of, 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 of how of was the left opposition put down. <coughs> uh, what, what, what I hear you saying is this was not just a purge of uh, leadership, uh -huh. but but there was not uh, uh, there was not a mass to follow that leadership, and and this analysis seems to be shared by Trotsky as well as uh, what we can glean from facts. Right, he had a minority of followers in the party, but you have to keep in mind after the after the revolution had taken place, so many of the great revolutionary leaders had been killed in the civil war, mm -hmm. and after that, so. Many of the people who were in the party were people who had not been revolutionaries at the time of the revolution. They were just, you know, your, you know, your average politician who just happened to get into politics. And the, the, it was a minority of the party which had been Bolsheviks mm -hmm. and had been part of the revolution at the beginning. So, so and Trotsky did. He met up. He got up and made his case. They, they published, you know, pamphlets and all that. But they lost a majority vote, and they lost. And their 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 opposition, their their thesis, their their program was not carried out. But in addition to losing, the bureaucracy continued to secure its its power, and ultimately by you know by 1928, after they lost in 26, but by 1928 the left opposition was made illegal. Um, that that being a member of the opposite opposition to the the general line, Stalin said, was opposition to the party. So if you were part of the left opposition, that was grounds for being sent to prison. Trotsky, who at the time had been on the Central Committee and was the sole you know left opposition figure, was deported to Turkey. And it was a step back for the revolution. The revolutionary spirit, you know, did not. Uh, why did Trotsky want to revolutionize the whole world? What was the Hmong just doing just Russia? Well, ultimately his feeling was that the Russian revolution would, would be defeated mm -hmm. um, if, it, if it did not remain because Russia was such a backward country and it had been such a poor country that, that they needed the industrial <laughs> strength of the rest of the world to, to succeed. And they needed, uh, you know, that you can't just have revolution in one country. You need revolution around the world. Yeah. But there was also an embargo on, on trade with the Soviet Union. Uh, uh, so uh, the uh, 
the, the Soviet Union was not able to engage in normal trade relations with the rest of the world. And also to be pointed out, Caleb, uh, uh, is the fact that they were attacked by uh, Western countries, uh, as we went over last week with this.